Hey, my name's Chris Patrick, and welcome to this YouTube that we're going to do on telescopes. And I wanted you to learn about telescopes so that you can get out in the night sky and really get excited about looking at these objects in the heaven from the planets to comets to deep sky objects to stars. And so there's certain telescopes that I'm going to recommend that are good, and there's a lot of telescopes that are not good. So I had the privilege uh, years ago of being in the astronomy club. I had learned about this club when they set up their telescopes on the beach at Dolphin Island to view Halley's Comet back in 1986. So I went out there and they had these big telescopes like this. This is an eight inch Newtonian reflector on an equatorial mount. They had, this is a 4.5, and they had binoculars, all kinds of telescopes. And I got to see Halley's Comet. And so I got so interested in it, I said, I want to join the astronomy club. So I, I got in the club, and, and I started looking through all these scopes, and I started asking questions. Before I bought a telescope, I wanted to know what's the best kind to, get, to buy. So I bought me uh, an 8-inch uh, Newtonian reflector. But I was really fascinated with the stars. I had star charts I could look up. I would, I would make, what am I going to look at tonight? And I would make out a list of things. Most people don't go through that kind of trouble. I did have people who had computers that were hand-controlled computers, and you had to move it to what this said, but it wasn't very accurate. But nowadays, you jump up to where we're at today. Oh, my God, the computers are so much uh, better and faster, and it doesn't, uh, uh, what used to cost you $3,000, you can get for $500 or less. It's amazing. So the, the first one I want to talk to you about is the Star Seeker 4, 130-millimeter, or 5.1 inch mirror, and this particular uh, telescope is made by Orion. All, all the ones we're going to look at are made by Orion. And Orion, this is what they call a computer controlled go to telescope. This is a Mead 4.5 inch uh, Telstar that I don't even believe they make these anymore. But I wanted to show you this is very similar though to the Star Seeker 4, it has how it works. And you can see I can control the telescope by hand or I can tell the computer to uh, go where I want it to go. And I can say I want to see Mercury, I want to see this deep sky object, that, I can do it. Or I can say I want to go on a tour guide tonight. It has a tour guide feature and it knows the best features for that night. And you can say sure I want to do that, click, and it'll take you from the brightest object to the dimmer objects. And I suggest don't start with the moon though, no, skip the moon if the moon's out. And go to your other objects and enjoy uh, seeing in an hour, an hour and a half, more objects than you would see on your own, I can promise you. And so that's why I, I love these things here. And these computers that they got nowadays are awesome. Something like this cost you three grand years ago. Now you can get this one, uh, the, the Star Seeker 4, uh, for about $499. And if you get all the extra accessories, about $549. And that is, is a, I mean, a, a, an awesome telescope. And it has great eyepieces. One of the problems that I saw in the astronomy club is people would have cheap eyepieces. Buy a good telescope and have cheap eyepieces. That don't work. Your eyepieces are extremely important. And so this one here comes with two eyepieces, 23 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. If you get the extra accessory kit, it'll come with a shorty Barlow. And a Barlow is what doubles the power of an eyepiece. So you could find what you want to look for and then take this out, find what you're looking for, take it out, put this in, slip this back in, and you just doubled the power. So you can zoom in on a planet or something. If you got three eyepieces with this, it's as if you have six eyepieces because you've doubled the power of all these. And I love it. I also love that the fact that the eyepieces that are in the Star Seeker 4 are 60 degrees wide field. I mean, that is awesome. I, I bought wide field. They're very expensive eyepiece, so I'm amazed they even put these in there. So you will enjoy and see more with that than, than other regular eyepieces. So uh, this, th the database in this Mead here had 1,400 objects in it. The database in the Star Seeker 4 has 42,000 objects in it, so it's amazing. It's got certain features that I like. The, this one here, once I calibrate it, 
uh, if I'm sitting here knowing that I want to go look at this object over here and I tell it to go there on its own, it's going to just slew over there. And it takes time to get over there. But it's wasting battery the whole time it goes over there. So I can go like this to save some battery. Uh, and guess what? This is no longer uh, calibrated and I have to redo it. But the Star Seeker 4, you can move it by hand. It still knows what you're doing. It's still calibrated. I like that. The accessory kit will give you an AC-DC cord converter where you can just plug it into your house current here and you don't even need to worry with your batteries. So if you're in your house, you get an extension cord, you can do that. If you go out somewhere else, you have batteries. So it's just an awesome uh, telescope for the money. Orion has great products. So that's the first one. Now, if you, uh, I think I saw the accessories, everything together on Amazon for $549. And I'm telling you, if you have children, you don't want to buy that those cheap refractors because you can't hardly see nothing through them. And many a child has had interest in astronomy and got out there and didn't see nothing, and it, and it totally killed their interest. This something like this, your kids will love it. You set it up, and, and you can train them how to do it. And some of your kids might even want to get into astronomy and get out and look at the night sky. Well. The next telescope I want to look at, if you say $549 or $499 if you don't get the accessories too much, is the uh, Orion Space Probe 130ST reflector, which means short tube. And it's a 5.1 inch also, about $300. Bucks. And if you get the accessories, it's about $349 on Amazon. And it, it also has a 5.1 inch mirror, but it's on an equatorial mount, but no computer. And so, so the deal is this equatorial mount that you get is, is adjustable. It can go up, it can go down. If you want to sit down and look, you can do lower. If you want to stand up and look, you can. If you're a tall person, there's a lot of tall people buy telescopes and they have to bend so far they don't like it. You can get it on up to where you can look through the eyepiece like I'm looking right here. You can see uh, what you want not have to bend too far over. All of them come with... Uh, the Star Seeker Easy Finders. And so you can, if you just look at something you want to look at it, you can put it in the crosshairs, look at it, and then it's in the telescope and you can find what you're doing. So the Space Probe 130ST Reflector, great telescope. And the last one, which is like you can't afford $300, $350, is called the Star Blast 2 4.5 inch reflector, which has the same features, still has plus eyepieces has the equatorial mount, but it's four and a half inch, which is this size, instead of the 5.1 inch. And it's still, it's, it's still a good one, but on the ones that don't have the computer, you're gonna have to know what you're looking for. And there's certain objects in the heaven you're probably not gonna know to look for unless you have star charts. Look in there and go, I wanna look at Andromeda, I wanna look at, if you do this right, you can look up at Jupiter and see the moons of Jupiter. You can see the rings of Saturn, you can see these open clusters and these deep sky objects and, and these uh, closed clusters. And you can see, of course, the moon is like off the chain. But when you, when you begin looking through your telescope, watch the moon last. Because your eyes need to get used to, the, to the being dark. We call them dark adapted eyes. In fact, I used to wear, it looked like a pirate. I'd wear uh, something over the eye I was looking through and I'd look through this eye when it came time to look through the telescope, I'd flip it over and look through my dark adapted eye to turn around and come back. And the reason you do that is, is your eye is an amazing instrument and you want it to be fully dark adapted because when it's fully dark adapted, man, you can see things you can't see otherwise. And then, uh, so go to the moon last because the moon is like very bright and it'll take away your dark adapted eye. So anyway, uh, so I'm telling you to do this so you can get out under the heavens and enjoy uh, looking at God's creation. Now, once I got into astronomy, though, and I, and I started looking at my star charts, one day I was looking at my star charts, and because I'm a Christian and a pastor and I've studied the Bible for years, I started looking going, you know what? That symbol right there is a biblical symbol, and that symbol is a biblical symbol, and 
that symbol, I, I said, there's something to this. And I remembered that the wise men in Matthew chapter 2 uh, looked in the heavens and they saw the star that represented uh, the Messiah would be born, the king of Israel. And they came in and, and Matthew 2 and said, where is he born, king of the Jews? But we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And so I got interested in studying it. And through the years, uh, I studied it and learned uh, what God's code is. And I wrote a book called The Zodiac Code, God's Hidden Message in the Stars Revealed. You can go to my YouTube channel and see me teach on many of the constellations and what they mean. And it is amazing. Uh, astrology is the twist and perversion of the original plan of the gospel that God put in the heavens, and you'll just have to see it to understand it. But there's many things up there, including he'd be born of a virgin in Virgo the virgin. He'd die on a cross in Libra. He would war with our enemy, the scorpion, the serpent, and the dragon, which are all representative of Satan. And it goes on and it even says you have to be born again, filled with the Spirit of God. There would be persecution come, and eventually there would be something called the rapture of the church. All this is in the heavens. And, and including the wrath of God and Leo the Lion. You need to know about it. It's important. God did it. He brought up all the billboards of the heaven to advertise the gospel. And if you can look down below and you can see how, you, if you want to order this book, you can. Go to YouTube and see me talk about it. It's very important. So God bless you. Enjoy looking at the heavens. Enjoy learning what God did. God bless you.